Hi YouTube and welcome to my channel. My name is Patrick. So I was recently sent a Link Station N1 to review. And if you haven't seen my video reviewing it, I'll leave it linked in the description down below. Uh, but they sent me this box to review. And so what do I do? I install Linux on it. Of course I do. What else would I do with a NAS? So yes, we are throwing, we're taking the manual and throwing it to the wind. Uh, we are not going to be using the software it came with, and we're going to do everything by the commands line. So what have I done to this poor box? Well, let's dig right in. So the Link Station N1 came with Unraid, and I really like Unraid. It's a very simple, easy to use home server setup. It's great for use in a home. However, I'm a cloud security engineer. I need enterprise grade stuff. I, and what's, what's more enterprise grade than Linux? Like seriously, a good old fashioned Linux server, you cannot beat that. But I needed more control over the operating system than what Unraid afforded me. There were two brick walls that I ran into. First of all, I wanted to be able to use my backup software Veeam and install the agent and get OS level backups of everything on the NAS. Uh, however, that wasn't possible with Unraid. Or if it was possible, it wasn't officially supported. I'm sure there's some way you can fashion that into working. But the other thing I ran into was my Seam. And for context, a Seam is a security information event management platform. Basically, you take all of your logs across all of your devices and services, and you put all those logs into the seam. And then the seam runs queries against the logs to raise alerts for stuff you want to know about, or even take action when it detects malicious activity. So the seam is a must in my book. I'm not going to be running a system that doesn't have a connection to a seam. And Unraid just wasn't going to be it. And in addition, the Link Station had a, a little secret. There was an extra 128 gigs of eMMC storage in that thing, and Unraid couldn't do anything with it. And so if I want to unlock that extra storage, well, my options are Linux or BSD. So what distro did I choose? Well, I had only two requirements. I wanted it to natively support ZFS, and I wanted it to natively support QEMU and KVM for virtualization. So that leaves my options to something like OpenBSD, NetBSD, or Ubuntu. And I went with Ubuntu for the familiarity, uh, but also a BSD would do just fine here, I'd imagine. So I installed Ubuntu 25.10, and let me tell you, that was a mistake. Never install the short-term support versions of Ubuntu server. Like, the short-term support versions are so buggy and messy, I really wish that I had installed the long-term support, like 2404. Uh, but that's beyond the point. Well, no, it's not. It's not. Let me talk about that some more. So Ubuntu 25.10 breaks the cockpit package. And cockpit is a web GUI that you can use to manage a Linux server. That's fine if it's broken because I can do everything in the commands line. Uh, but I could imagine for average Joe Jane six pack having a web interface would be nice. Uh, but you take what you can get with Ubuntu. I really uh, should have installed like ButterFS on Fedora or something. But why am I so worried about ZFS? Well, ZFS is really, really great and I haven't properly used it yet. And I wanted to dig my, dig my teeth in and get a taste of it. Uh, so here's my reasoning. I have six disks in this thing. I have four M.2s and two two and a half inch drives. There's only two terabytes of storage total, but I wanted to just take all those disks, throw them in an array, or not an array, just throw them in a pool and be done with it. And ZFS offers a great way to do that. Setting up the ZFS pool was incredibly simple and I had it done in less than five minutes. It was a great experience, credit where it's due. But I set it up with no mirrors, no parity, just straight up all the discs in a pool, uh. ready to rock and roll. So why did I not set up some form of parity, you may be wondering. 
because what happens when a disk fails? Well, let me give you some insight here. Uh, raid and parity in disks is only good for increasing your uptime. They are not meant to serve as backups. And for me, my uptime does not need to be 100%. If a drive fails, I can be down for a couple hours while I restore from backup. And that brings me to my next point. If Even if you have redundancy in your disks, you should still have proper backups. I cannot stress that enough. RAID is not a replacement for backups. It's something that you put in place to increase the uptime of your systems. It is not something that you put there for the safety of data. And so I have proper backups coming from Veeam, like I mentioned earlier. I'm lucky enough that I have a not for resale license for Veeam. So I literally have like all the premium features for free. Uh, so you better believe I'm gonna use that. Okay, so what all is this thing gonna run? Uh, obviously, virtual machines and containers are where all the applications are going to live. First of all, I'm going to install Jellyfin. Uh, Jellyfin is a streaming service that you use on your own network with your own media, and I've got tons of TV shows and movies, so I'm going to load them all up Bruh. in there. That's going to be really nice. Another thing that I'm going to use is Pihole. Pihole is a DNS-based ad blocking service, and when combined with Tailscale, it allows you to have your own personal VPN on the go that supplies ad blocking and access to your local services. So, Tailscale, remember that name. I'm also going to try Image. Image is a photo backup software, and photo management software, really. And it looks really powerful, and I want to replace iCloud Photos, so we're going to go with Image. And then I gotta have Wikipedia. I've gotta have a copy of Wikipedia on my local network. I've gotta have a copy of the ArchWiki on my local network. And that means I'll be installing Kiwix. Kiwix is a program that allows you to host your own copies of wikis. And so I'm gonna pull down all the wikis I can and have them locally on my network because information is disappearing. I don't know if you've noticed. And like I said, Tailscale is going to tie the whole thing together. Everything's going to be on Tailscale. That'll be my default way to access these services, whether I'm local or abroad. Abroad, I said that like I'm leaving the country. I'm, I'm not. I'm not that interesting. So what's the point of all of this? Why am, why am I going to all this trouble? Well, the thing is, I'm trying to escape from big tech. I'm trying to separate myself from Apple, from Google, from Microsoft. I want to have control and sovereignty over the tools that I use. Uh, the most difficult thing I'm going to run into is replacing my video editing setup. Uh, I can't really make my videos without my iPhone and my iPad, so that's going to be a headache. I might make an exception for it, but the point is, I've, I've got this Pixel 4, it's running Lineage OS, it has no Google Apps, and that is going to pair perfectly with my new server that I have set up uh, that will allow me to use all the services I might want on this, on the go, without giving over any of my data to big tech. If you want to see future videos in this series breaking down my journey and how it's going, consider subscribing to the channel. If you want to see uh, more videos like this, then like this video. And if you made it here to the very end, leave a little clown emoji in the comments down below. I'll forget that I said that, and then I'll be confused why everyone's calling me a clown. Little prank on future Patrick. Uh, in addition, I have a Discord server. It's not really my Discord server, I just really like it. And I'm going to leave it linked in the description down below. So if you want to hang out with me and my friends, there's a good place to do it. Anyway... Thank you for watching, my name is Patrick, and I'll catch you in the next one.